Hello everyone. As we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic has led to the shutting down of economies and essential services. An important facet of the COVID-19 response, which was initially somewhat ignored, has been the disruption of medical services. Across the country, non-essential medical services and support was more or less stalled, even for the elderly. Moreover, hospitals were prime hotspots for catching infections. Today we have here Dr. Rahul Manjanda to discuss the effect on maternal and child health care that the pandemic has seen. Uh, sir, thank you for being here. Good to be here, Priti. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Sir, quickly jumping in, I would like to know your thoughts on the impact COVID-19 has seen on maternal and child care, taking into consideration that many hospitals have been repurposed to exclusively focus on COVID-19. You know, health, uh, if I start out first saying that health really has been kept by all of us, uh, not only in the pandemic, but otherwise also at the back burner and comes as a last priority, uh, quote unquote. So with the pandemic coming in, this has become even worse. Now, yes, what you mentioned is correct, is the fact that many of the hospitals have been uh, made designated COVID centers. Uh, rightfully so, I might put uh, that through, is, uh, and that has put a restriction on uh, the availability of health services. So, uh, you know, the government has also um, actually earmarked 20% in the private institutes, uh, besides making a lot of the private institutes basically COVID hospitals. So these are now treating only and only COVID patients. So that puts a restriction on the availability of healthcare uh, facilities. And of course, like you said, uh, they are hotbeds for anybody else who come uh, to catch this infection. So naturally, it has decreased our resources and hence the delivery of these services. Okay. Uh, so for specifically for the vulnerable sections of the society, how has COVID-19 care been different, especially for pregnant women and uh, newborn children? You know, uh, the test of how healthy a population is really depends on the what we call the, the infant mortality rate, what we call in, in our uh, parlance, or the maternal mortality rate. And in my view as a gynecologist, even if one mother dies, uh, that's too much. Uh, we have brought them down, these two rates. Um, infant mortality rate is the number of children per thousand population dying um, uh, in our country that are born before the uh, one, one year. Uh, so that has come down in the last 10 years, almost by 50%. We have where currently uh, the infant mortality rate is at about 30 or so. And uh, maternal mortality rate, which is number of mothers dying uh, per 10, 100,000 uh, is, um, is now 130, which is less uh, compared to the last 10 years. Uh, but um, with this coming in, uh, the access to services, uh, the access to um, for mothers as well as the children who are born to any of these services has decreased sharply. And uh, people are wary of coming to the hospitals. Hence, naturally, but naturally, uh, this we are looking at this going up. And there are papers that have been written uh, on this. It's really what I would call collateral damage due to uh, this, the services have decreased, people are wary of coming in. And uh, we need to be looking at that in order to uh, sort of try and mitigate this effect of it. So yes, it has affected these two vulnerable, uh, you know, uh, parts of society and the population, which are an important part to showcase uh, actually the health of a population or a country. Yeah. Yes, sir, you correctly mentioned uh, there has, uh, very recently there was a study that estimated that in a severe case scenario uh, of the pandemic, which would mean reduction in healthcare services and an increase in uh, wasting because of lack of food, there could be additional deaths um, uh, up to 44% for children and about 38% for women in low income and middle income countries. Uh, considering that, where do you think India is? What is being done to ensure that we do not get here? Well, uh, you know, this study uh, was, as you know, um, and I'm sure you've uh, read it, it's, it's been done in Baltimore and it's by Robertson who's uh, done it. Uh, and uh, while it uses a model which I might not think is applicable here, but it does 
uh, it does uh, sort of warn us or forewarn us of, like I said, the collateral damage that is expected or could be uh, due to the uh, the availability of services, due to the fact that people are not uh, accessing the services. We need to have a program in place that will have be alternate so that we can get uh, the basic services out in these circumstances to uh, the pregnant woman uh, as well as the infants and whether that is by telemedicine. And I think what it's going to do is it's going to, uh, to open up different methods of actually tackling something which uh, we thought uh, would take a longer time. But I think if we bring in telemedicine, the basic consultation uh, for the pregnant lady can be done over the head, like we're talking now. And that will really help us dissipate and maybe even move uh, forwards uh, from where we are over before uh, the pandemic, uh, you know, to get the services to the, uh, to the uh, pregnant woman and bring down a lot of costs also. So that's something that we can take out of, uh, out of uh, what we are, uh, what our predicament is now. But yes, this study that you mentioned uh, talks about the maternal uh, deaths and the child deaths um, increasing by almost 50%. And that's uh, quite a bit and will set us back uh, quite a bit. So we need to look at that. It's warning us and see how we can sort of take cognizance of it and, and uh, put practices in place to uh, mitigate that. Yes, sir. And there has recently there has also been a lot of dialogue, uh, dialogue surrounding uh, the possible reversal of the hard won progress to reach children and adolescents with important vaccines uh, because of uh, COVID-19. Uh, what is being done in India to ensure optimum immunization coverage? Well, you see, uh, it's been what? We've been in lockdown since March. And it's been only about four months. So we're still, world over, we're still finding our feet. And uh, when something like this happens, you first take care of the initial hit that you get. And then you look at the collateral damage. I don't know uh, if we're still in that, but I'm sure the authorities have started looking at it and putting in their practices in place. For some amount of uh, time, I'm sure the stocks that are all, already available with the ground worker will be used. But we are definitely, to, uh, you know, will find a shortage of this. I feel uh, what is being used and what probably will be used also is, I saw an interview by the head of the Amul, uh, the MD of Amul. And when this pandemic uh, came in, he said, you know, for us, it really is not something new because we've been dealing with, with uh, natural disasters and how to get milk to uh, the needy and to everybody uh, we have our SOPs in place. So uh, I think using that uh, SOP as to how to get the vaccines there, how to get your basic medical services to a lot of good, um, you know, for this time. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we take it from there and try and mitigate the, uh, the effects of the pandemic. Yes, sir. And you're right. Uh, I think reaching people in a remote areas, especially, is very important. Um, Taking that into consideration, how are uh, how are private and public healthcare uh, facilities in India working together to reduce the gap in essential health services? Um, you know, I come from a private institute, though I've worked in a in a government institute and all my life, where I've trained and and worked after that, and uh, generally private and and government are at uh, loggerheads. But you know, such uh, situations. Uh, call for, as they say, strange bedfellows. And the model of Delhi actually shows you how all of us need to work together in tandem to try and, uh, you know, uh, stop this uh, in its tracks or uh, decrease the effects of it. And uh, there is no doubt in my mind that both, not only the private and public, but states along with the, uh, the population needs to work together. So um, I think the the uh, the uh, private healthcare, which uh, takes care of a lot of the part of healthcare, whether it's in Delhi or uh, you know in the whole of India, uh, has come on board by and large. They've come up to this uh, plate and have taken um, the initiative as well as accepted uh, the challenge. And you know whether it is with uh, with the treating patients free of cost at a subsidized cost, putting 
uh, you know, reserving beds for them, actually transforming a whole hospital into a COVID center. It's what you do when you come together in uh, any adversity. Uh, so yes, it has, um, it has um, uh, sort of uh, been there in this situation also. We have come up, the private and the public sector together, and, uh, and we're trying to sort of do whatever we can together. And that hopefully and is bringing results, at least in Delhi where I come from, uh, is what I can say. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for being here. Was, uh, we were very happy to have you on board with us. And um, thank you, everybody, for watching this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, please do post. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kriti. Thank you for having me. And to the ORF and all of you there, and you're doing a great job. So continue doing it. Thank you, sir.